Coach, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the steel capital of the world, Pittsburgh, PA, and Heinz Field. They love the black and gold here in the Steel City. And a few moments ago, their Steelers emerged from the Heinz Field Tunnel. They're set. We're set as the Steelers are ready to do battle with the Los Angeles Chargers. So first and 10 now from the 30. They'll run. This is Melvin Gordon. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game, so what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, it's nothing but room to run. Over the middle, he's got Tyrell Williams. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height. Sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback who has to slide and find open space to throw. And that was a good run. This was only one of nine guys to go over 1,000 yards in 2017. And I think you can't let him run wild here. What do you think, 100 yards, the measuring stick? Always. That is the threshold. You want to keep him under that if you want to play good Cut. defense. On second down, they'll run with Gordon. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. It'll go as a gain of 11 and a charger first. Partner, we've seen Melvin Gordon do it a variety of ways running the football. How about that last run? Had a little shake and bake to it there, didn't he? He did. Kind of reminded me of when he was at Wisconsin and what he did in Nebraska. His last year there, 408 yards in a single game at that time. That was the NCAA rushing record, wasn't it? Yeah, and then a week later, Samaj P. Ryan broke his record with 427 yards against Kansas. Now Gordon on first down. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. T.J. Watt in on the tackle. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. They'll try to throw here, Rivers. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. They'll give him eight on the play, and that's going to bring up a third down. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. Second down pass play got him eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. Had a chance to maybe limit them to three if they could have gotten that stop there, but a new set of downs. And with a new set of downs, you got to take the mentality of the whole thing. Right now, everyone's looking at the offense and saying they've got the advantage. The best defenses just say, okay, new set of downs gives us another chance to make a play ourselves and maybe change things up. And this is complete. It's Allen. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the five. And a nice gain of 21 yards. His passing's been on point on this drive, hasn't it? Been very accurate, gotten the ball downfield, gained nice chunks of yardage. But now, in this situation, the field is really condensed, partner. So if he's going to throw the football, that would be pinpoint here. Well, as I was going to ask you about that. Field shrinks, has to be sharper, but it's been a good opening drive so far. Now they just want to see if they can cap it off with the bell ringer and put it in the end zone. First and goal, Melvin Gordon. Yeah, not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. 
be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. One man in the backfield, that's Gordon, second and goal. Set. Rivers now. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. Now we've got third and goal coming up, and couldn't you imagine being in that huddle, partner? You know they're looking at each other saying, we can't come away with just three points after this drive. Yeah, they've covered a lot of ground. They want more than that three. The Steeler defense proving its mettle here. And now this is third and goal. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Well, Brandon, we see why it's a team game there because there's a sigh of relief that they just released defensively. If he's able to get that one away, that's likely a touchdown. But instead, that pressure from the front got to him and forced the incompletion. You're right. He had him open just a split second too late on the release. to throw it here they pass up the three fake it it doesn't work i know coaches always tell us that they make decisions about these types of plays this type of a fake earlier in the week to take the emotion out of the deal i don't know that that was really true here this one felt like all of a sudden hey i feel have a feeling about let's go ahead and get it and it just didn't work yeah i know one thing they wish they had it back. Yeah, they certainly do. But the buck stops with the head coach on that one. He has to green light that attempt. The Steelers, of course, had all the questions lingering with Le'Veon Bell. Tip of the cap to James Conner. He really has filled in nicely. He prepared himself as if he were going to be the starter right from week one. And I got to see him in preseason. And you saw a little bit of everything. His ability to run inside, also run to the perimeter, catch the ball of the backfield. And how about his season opener against Cleveland? They didn't win the game. But he played awfully well, 135 yards rushing, and he helped close out a big win at Tampa Bay in week three on Monday Night Football with some nice runs down the stretch. Roethlisberger will hand to counter. And he'll power his way up near the 25. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half. And some of these shorter games turn into bigger runs later. Here's Roethlisberger. This is caught by Antonio Brown. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Roethlisberger hooking up with Brown to get the Steelers a first. And there's our first glimpse of Antonio Brown in this game, and he's a guy that's a threat each and every time the ball heads in his direction. Coming off the second year where he led the league in receiving yards in 2017. Yeah, 1,533 just turned 30 back in July, and no signs of this man stopping. They run with Connor, and hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Yeah, they give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he stopped immediately there. Corey Liggett makes the stop. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. On third down, Roethlisberger. And this is going to be incomplete. And third down is a key down in any game you play. And third down defense, something we've got to watch in this one. Got to be effective on the passing downs. That's a pretty good first step right there. 
On fourth down, here comes the Steeler punter, Jordan Berry, to kick it away. Travis Benjamin, deep for the Chargers. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. We've got a second here to talk about the Chargers as they bring their offense back out, and specifically Phillip Rivers, Charles, fourth quarterback in history to start 200 consecutive games. The other three, Brett Favre and Eli and Peyton Manning, but he's playing at an MVP level, is he not? He certainly is, and should be getting some attention for that. The tough part, Patrick Mahomes has kind of taken over that talk this year. But still, the way that he has the Chargers playing, the way he's delivering the football, spreading it around, he has his team in contention in the AFC West, definitely there for a playoff spot, and they could be so dangerous down the stretch. And remember, they're supposed to get defensive end Joey Bosa back for the stretch run. He's been out with a foot injury. He had 23 sacks in his first two years. He'll make Melvin Ingram that much better on the other side. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. They'll run it now out of the gun. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that's going to lead to a third down. From the gun, Rivers. And he'll find his man on the out route. That's Allen. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. And now some motion before the snap. And this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. A give to the fullback on the dive. And he's going to be taken down shy of the five-yard line. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. Well, big man with ball. Net bigger man on the other side of the line. A really nice play for the defense. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. On third down, that's Connor. And not much there as he gets it up to about the five-yard line. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times. And what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. Here's Jordan Berry now as he's on to punt for L.A. And that's a 48-yard punt with a coverage holding him to three on the return. And it'll be Charger football here as they take over. The Chargers getting set to go. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. 
Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? And he'll take this one across the 45 up to about the 46-yard line. Joe Hayden there to bring him down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now Rivers going to give it off to Gordon. And he'll get three up to midfield. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. The Chargers on third down. Just one for three thus far. Here it's third and three. Rivers now from the 50. And that will be incomplete. They couldn't hook up on what's going to be the final play of this first quarter. Here's Donnie Jones now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. And now out come the Steelers. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. Open man right side is Smith-Schuster complete. That throw good for four. It's second down. When you decide to run a hitch route, it really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. They'll come up second and six now from the 24. Now Roethlisberger to throw on second down. Over the middle here to Brown. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. On second down, Roethlisberger. That'll be taken in there by James Washington. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. It's the first time that they've looked his way tonight, and he comes up with a first down on the play. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. Connor. And he's going to get across midfield and into Charger territory. Desmond King making the tackle. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Second down, here's Roethlisberger. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Set, blue 30. From the gun on third down, it's Roethlisberger. 
He gets it to Brown. Good play. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Roethlisberger coming up with a first and 10. And he's hit on all five of his pass attempts on this drive so far. Now Roethlisberger. And this is caught at the 8. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. and He's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Only a yard of the completion. It's second and goal. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. He'll get it up the middle. And that'll get him halfway there as he takes it from the six to the three-yard line. This is kind of one of those in-between plays here, Charles, on third and goal from the two or the three in that area. What do you dial up? Something quick hitting. You don't have the time for something that develops slowly. It's got to be right at them if you're going to run the football. And if you're going to throw it, something quick, get it out of your hands in a hurry. On third and goal, Roethlisberger. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10, Joey Bosa with a big time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. So on fourth down, the Steelers call on the number of Chris Boswell for the field goal try. And Boswell's kick is good. And the Steelers will jump out to a three zip lead. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle. Right? No big plays given up. No balls over your head. Bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Ah, uh, you like Come that on. one? What does that mean, break out the... Just because you break, you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. Yeah, for the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Chargers offense now, they get set to head back on the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys, win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. He'll start on the ground. This is Gordon on first down. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job, but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Bud Dupree, a former first-round pick, in on the stop. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. The Chargers on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and nine. Working out of the gun, Rivers. Got a man, it's complete, Williams. And they work this well upfield across the 45. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. He's such a good route runner, shows it there on third down, very proficient and a good pass. 
And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was trying to hit Melvin Gordon there, and that'll bring up second down. Hey, with that incompletion, time to have some fun. And I want to know, at the Davis household, who carves the turkey? Well, certainly not me. Well, I knew that. I can tell you that. But let's just switch it. Who cares who carves the turkey? I want to know what you're going to be knocking down on your plate on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, well, definitely turkey. Now, my mom's corn and green bean casserole, while it may not sound overly appetizing, is out of this world. And her sweet potato casserole, second to none. So I should be making my plans to yeah. fill a seat at the garden come, household? Come, you, you're more than welcome. Because I think my household may kick me out. <laughs> what do you? What's your favorite? What's on your plate? I'm telling you, when you throw the yams at me, Look out, because I'm gonna go I'm gonna go to town. That's like dessert to me. Well, how about dessert? I go pecan and apple pie with vanilla ice cream. Ooh, there's nothing wrong with that. I like the pecan pie, but I do love a chocolate pie. I can't help myself. It's one of my favorites. And that is incomplete. And based on my math. They've only converted one time thus far in this game, so you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. Here's Donnie Jones now as he's on to punt for L.A. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Now the Steelers' offense gets ready to get back onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. The drive will start with Connor, and he'll take this one up over the 20 to the 21-yard line. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. It's Roethlisberger. Pass incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver that time. Third down here. Just his second incompletion so far. He's 8 for 10. I think he'll take 80%. There's no doubt that he will, but if you're the defensive play caller, you better circle what you just dialed up on your play sheet and come back to it because you just caused an incompletion. You need a few more of those. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Brown. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence, when in doubt, find your veterans. He used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, know, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this, when he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. And getting this chest shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. They ran that one well, and not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. On first and 10, it's Roethlisberger. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? 
Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. From the red zone now, here's Roethlisberger on first down. This one complete right side to McDonald. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Set. Lock 80. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. And that one was nearly picked. Not sure he was accounting for the free safety. Now it brings up third down. I know in every game we do, we talk about momentum. That was a momentum play lost. And now there could be a letdown because they didn't get the interception. Yeah, you could almost hear the collective gas on the sideline as he could not come up with that football. Roethlisberger. And this is going to be incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. From the right hash, just a 34-yard attempt. And Boswell's kick is good. And that will add three more to their lead. It pushes it up to six. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, Parker, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk is a big decision here. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Set, 390. On first and 10, Rivers. 
Green's got it over the middle. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Set, Rivers on first down. Allen has it, left side. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. 11 more on that one and another first down. First down now, but that clock rolling. In hot, in hot. From the red zone now, Rivers. And this is caught. He's got it. Touchdown, L.A. Virgil Green in the final seconds of the first half. And the Chargers are an extra point away from moving out in front. Partner, you got a pretty good hoops background. You've seen those late-and-a-half plays designed to get them a last shot, give them momentum. I think this touchdown equates to that. Absolutely, and then they can take the lead here into the lockers. Big-time play. Yeah, and let's see what they design coming out for the second half as well. Oftentimes, when you get that momentum late, you find a way to carry it through. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. On the return, it's Juju Smith-Schuster. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee, and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. Final play of the first half, barring a penalty, as they come up on first and 10. Final play of the half, it's Roethlisberger. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And this one is incomplete. So we have reached halftime intermission with the visiting Chargers on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports halftime report. Coach, Smith-Schuster now to return. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up and we still have a chance to win this game. There they do, we'll see if they can pick it up. It's Connor as they stay on the ground. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. It's a six yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them and they really embrace him. Now it's Roethlisberger. And he's got his man, the tight end, McDonald. For five yards on the play there, it's a drive will continue. When the offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Here's Connor. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a game considering the blitz that they just had against them. Right. Right. Hey, 
Again, it's counter. And he's going to get across midfield and into Charger territory. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. And the Steelers on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. Here it's third and two. Here's Roethlisberger. And he'll find Washington. That's complete. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Well, that'll get him the first down as they get nine yards out of that quick slant. When I heard James Washington's name called at the draft by Pittsburgh, I thought, what a nice pick by them. And just saw an example of why with a nice catch there. In his college career, stock and trade, taking it over the top. Deep post routes, deep go routes, catching the football downfield. But he's built like a running back. So I think that he can catch the short ones and turn them into long. Blitz coming and down he goes. Joey Bosa in there to get him for his second sack of the night. And that's his second sack of the game, but this player, disruptive in all phases, whether he's going upfield, coming underneath, you name it, he's a big time guy you have to block. Well, they're in some hot water now after that sack. It's second and 21. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be taken down right around the 41-yard line. A nice job of just sticking the helmet down nine yards on the play, but still third and 12 now. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. And he finds McDonald. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. And they'll run it here. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Joey Bosa with the tackle for loss. How about that pedigree in his family? Yeah, some good pedigree. Tell us about it, Mr. Davis. Dad played in the NFL, first-round draft pick. Uncle was a first-round draft pick. He's got a brother coming behind him. But Joey Bosa, guy plays really, really hard and plays all aspects on defense. And they can't bring him down. This will be caught inside the 10. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. A field goal would get him the lead, but that's not what they're shooting for as they come up on third down. On third down, that's Connor. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. He needed two, he got one, and that's going to leave him with fourth down at a yard. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. So now the field goal unit trots out there for the third time tonight. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Well, his kick is good. And they jump back in front here. It's 9-7. to seven. All nine points for him coming via the field goal, and this last one puts him out in front. All the field goals are great, but you know I'm going to get pessimistic here, right? Because you can't score touchdowns to win games in the NFL. I just wonder if all these field goals, great now, I wonder if they'll come back and haunt them later on. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. 
Now we'll look at the Chargers offense. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll make this a second and 13. three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. They keep it on the ground. Again, Gordon. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It's a loss of two. Now third down. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse. And I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. Now movement up front. I think they're going to get one of the Charger linemen. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. So the false start certainly doesn't help matters as they'll try again now, third and long. Play fake to Gordon, now Rivers. Pressure comes and the Steelers take him down. Bud Dupree with a big time sack on third down and it'll be a loss of seven. We've watched this a long time, and I still don't believe we get it. Third and long, why are you calling play action? Because yeah, they're not going to bite defensively, right? No, not at all. I did have a coach explain to me years ago that for some teams, that's how they have to deal with pass protection and their line blocking. But to me, it seems silly. Yeah, well, they're silly, and it leads to a play action sack. It's a 39-yard punt, eight on the return. And the Steeler offense, they're set up nicely as they take over. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. You put him through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that would help him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Too bad. I don't know about that. <laughs> Super tall. A good pick up there, 22. You know, when I see passes like that, I'm reminded of something you and I talked about yesterday. Big Ben was a wide receiver the first three years of high school, sitting behind the coach's son, and then he finally got that opportunity. I think he's made the most of it. It's always the coach's son, isn't it? But you know where it helps him? When he looks downfield, he knows what the receivers are going to do. He actually has wide receiver's eyes when he's throwing the ball. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. A gain of six there on first. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Set. To throw here, Roethlisberger. out he can't get rid of the football and he's taken down Corey Legion coming up the middle gets him there for a loss of about nine we are seeing two really confident defenses imposing their will on these offenses in this game yeah absolutely going toe for toe just curious if one of these offenses can wake up a little bit is there any way they can find something that can pop something big to knock them back on their heels now Ben on third and long Open man, Smith-Schuster, it's complete. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. 
Defensively, they just lost him. He was waving his arms saying, I'm wide open. They found it. Yeah, and it's so interesting about when a receiver starts to wave his arms because some guys right off the line of scrimmage, they declare themselves up. You know, those guys throw the one arm up, right. hit me right now. In this case, he was so wide open that he was frantically trying to get his attention to make sure he got the football. And then I'm sure his only thought when the ball was in the air, don't drop it. Had too much time to think. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. Line of scrimmage, again the four-yard line, second and goal. Set! Left 30! Left. Here's Roethlisberger. And caught in the end zone! Touchdown, Steelers! In for the score, and the Steelers are going to add on to their lead. Well, they had their chances in the first half, you remember, but had to settle for two field goals. This time, they come away with six. I think they actually got affirmation about what they were doing by getting a touchdown, because the field goals means they got in range, but couldn't quite finish it off. This time, they broke through, and that's great for the old confidence. And on the sideline, difference of a feeling between three and six, is it astronomical or it, no? It, it, it can be at times, that's for sure. A lot of times, the field goal feels like a disappointment. The touchdown, well, that tells you you're getting it done. Extra point put through by Boswell, and that makes this a nine-point game. Boswell on now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. They go play action here on first down. Going deep here for Allen. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Keenan Allen, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. Well, this secondary has done such a good job of frustrating these receivers tonight. Another example right there on the deep ball. Sometimes when the sun goes down and it's just the bright lights in the stadium, puts a little extra spring in their step, doesn't it? And that's what we're seeing from the defenders. Doesn't matter whether it's man or zone, deep ball, short ball. And that was a deep one there. They're making plays on the football, contesting everything. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. And able to find Green. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That catch puts him over 70 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What did the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. The busy night continues for Gordon as he gets it here. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. 20 yards on both of those plays back to back there. They are moving now. It's another first down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. 
And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Rivers now on second down. Green with a catch left side. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. And that'll be enough to keep the drive moving forward. Another first down on the pickup of five yards. Rivers now 11 of 17 passing thus far. He's got his guys a first and 10. Back now in Pittsburgh. It's Charger football, but they trail here as we get going in quarter number four. Now a play fake here on first down. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Travis Benjamin that time. That'll bring up second down. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground, incomplete. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Throwing again, Rivers on second and 10. Going underneath for Gordon. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Five yards on the pickup, and that'll make it third down. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. The last play on the completion got him half of what they needed. Now here's a tough third and five. Rivers going to turn and give this one to his running back, Gordon. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Call it a gain of three, and it'll bring up fourth down. But forget knowing where the first down line was. His defense created their own line of scrimmage. They won every battle up front, and a lot of times that is one-on-one. -on -one. And if you win your one-on-ones enough times, your defense is going to be pretty good. They had more people to the football and snuffed out the play. And his kick is indeed good. And the deficit trimmed to six now at 16-10. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. So here comes the kickoff and what now is just a one score, six point game. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Steelers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that, they had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went. Now look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Desmond King picks it. And he'll get this back to the 32-yard line. A critical error there in a tight game of the fourth. All you talk about is taking care of the football, and especially with a lead here in the fourth quarter. Turning it over, now the door is open for the opposition. Just in general, when you're passing in the fourth quarter with a lead, no matter at what point, you got to be super careful. Got to be careful, and sometimes you can be so careful that you end up running yourself into an error. Rivers now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. Rivers now to throw on first down. And this is complete. It's Allen. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. 18 yards there, and it'll be a first and goal. 
Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. They come up on a first and goal and most likely four down territory as they need a touchdown and the PAT for the lead. They'll try and punch it in. Gordon. Oh, and now he bowls him over. Now he fights his way in for a Charger touchdown. Melvin Gordon, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Chargers can now take the lead with the extra point. Second effort there, he was determined to find pay dirt, and he did. I think that's a great example of what coaches talk about, a back that runs behind his pads, and he uses pads to get him into the end zone. The extra point splits the uprights, and they have taken the lead here in this fourth quarter. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And the Steelers set to take the field. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. And yes, complete to the tight end, McDonald. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end, a guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight, doesn't really matter because he has such great skills, you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Now Roethlisberger to throw on second down. And incomplete there, a nice hit, jars the ball free and brings up third down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Now it's Connor. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now Roethlisberger on first down. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. Stop shy of the 45. Showed off a nice little move on the play, though. Give him seven on the play, and it'll make it a second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Set right, set right. Set. Oh. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. Oh, a battle for it here, and this will be caught. 23 yards on the play. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around to make the play on the football. 
So from Charger territory now, here's a first and 10 as they're down to the 29-yard line. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Over the middle, hauled in by Smith-Schuster. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. A gain of six there on first. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Offensive line wasn't set. There's the flag, and five yards back they go. Quarterback has to look around and make sure that his team is ready to go. Sometimes the quarterbacks go faster than is necessary. The false start hurts him there a bit. Backs him up to second and nine. Off the play fake. Here's Roethlisberger. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. Joey Bosa bringing the pressure again, and that is his third sack here tonight. So the sack, and now a third and long situation for the Steelers and Ben Roethlisberger. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Joey Bosa in there again. My goodness, that is now his fourth sack tonight. My man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. So Rivers will lead the Chargers up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Off the play fake here, Rivers. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it. And it took the ball off course. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. After the incompletion, they'll try once more from the 20-yard line on second and 10. They'll try and grind some clock with Gordon. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. So following the run by Gordon, here's first and 10. Cut. 390. And cut. They go back to Gordon here on first down. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. So the solid run on first, and I would imagine no real hurry to run that second down play. No, it's all in your quarterback now. He's going to keep an eye on the play clock and bleed things down, and he's not going to let the ball be snapped until it's inside three seconds left on the play clock. Unless, of course, you're playing a video game you're trying to run it up on your friend. <laughs> nice touch. Cold-blooded, too. They'll run it now out of the gun. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. They'll wind up losing three yards here, and they're going to face a third down. Working out of the gun, Rivers gets it to Benjamin. It's caught. 
And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. Rivers to Benjamin, good for the Charger first down. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. So after two first downs, they get another here. First and 10 at the 45. A first down throw here for Rivers. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Keenan Allen, the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. A second down throw for Rivers. Wide open receiver complete. And he takes it down deep into Pittsburgh territory. A big play there for L.A. 45 yards. Well, from an offense's perspective, that sure was pretty because the corner route is extremely difficult to defend from my perspective. What we just saw there, is that sort of the evolution of the tight end position? Yeah, I think it is because more and more, tight ends are being treated like wide receivers. These are some agile players who can make a play in any spot on the field. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. The recipe is pretty simple, I think, right? You just give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. They'll give it to him up the middle, and he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Only a yard there, and that'll bring us to third and goal. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop. Ball right around the five here brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. Third and goal for Rivers. That is caught. It's Benjamin for the Charger touchdown. Travis Benjamin from six yards away. And the Chargers find a way to stretch their lead. Well, that's about as quick of a passing touchdown as you'll ever see right there. Everyone has a section in their playbook called the quick game. That was a super quick game. Out of the hands of the thrower, bam, right to the receiver, successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball in the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. And they had a long drive going last time, but it stalled out. But still, maybe something positive to carry forward from that last drop. Well, a few different things that you carry forward. Number one, as you noted, they were moving it pretty well, so that gives them a lot of confidence. The second part is keep your defense off the field. Gives them a chance to rest up a little bit. And last but not least, you've taken a good look at what you've done on offense, noted where the weaknesses are, and you know when you want to come back to them. Like when you're organized with your points. Well Point done. A, B, and C. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. First play of the drive in their hip pocket. Of course, the focus here has to be the touchdown of the two-point conversion. Field goals aren't going to help you. Yeah, but how about that first play of the drive? Just to get them started, nice gain, got some positive momentum going. They're on their way, and they don't have to rush. They'll run it now out of the gun, and he'll get this only up to about the 35. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. They know that old expression, it's not my night, 
it hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Roethlisberger now to throw on third down. Look at the dance and the juke. And what a return as he brings this one all the way back to the 25-yard line. Now, Green, that's twice now in this fourth quarter. As a quarterback, a lot of times you think it's all on you to make plays when you're losing. And here, the play's not there, but he throws it anyway. Now a handoff. This is Gordon. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. And there to stop him, Terrell Edmonds. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. This is Gordon as they go to him again. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. On third down, this is Melvin Gordon. Nifty move by Gordon. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop, 150 left in the football game. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And his kick is good. And that will bump the lead up to 11. So his second field goal of the game, and that could turn out to be the big one. Yeah, you have to make them score twice to beat you, and that's not impossible. But here in the fourth quarter, puts their backs clearly against the wall. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Steelers' offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. On the left side, it's McDonald. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. On second down, here's Roethlisberger. The 20. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. They give him a gain of 38. And at 50 seconds left, he'll spike it to stop the clock. Throw 
going again. It's Roethlisberger. And the Chargers rush is going to get there. Down he goes. Melvin Ingram in there to take him down. And the clock will roll. Now Ben on third and long. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Try and get it all back with one big shot right there. But even if successful, that doesn't get them all the way back to where they need to be. Can't totally abandon throwing the ball underneath as well. So out comes the field goal team once more. This to get it back to a one-score game. And Boswell's kick is good. And that'll make this an eight-point game. So that's a seven-play drive that ultimately stalls out there at the end. And things were a little leaky in the beginning of that drive, weren't they? But how about the front seven? As they got closer to their goal line, things stiffened a little bit, forced the field goal. Twenty-five seconds to go. A must recover if they're going to have any chance. And this is going to be recovered by the hand seam. And that should just about put a camper on this one. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Here comes the Chargers offense now back out onto the field. The clock cannot be stopped here. Defense can't do anything. So kneel it down, take it home. No doubt about it is what you practice for in winning situations each and every week. Victory formation, take a knee and go on into the locker room and celebrate. Call it a victory. Uh, kneel down here from Rivers, and that should be it. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something, and they, <laughs> they did in this one. A great come from behind victory in this one, Charles, and really the difference, obviously, was that fourth quarter. They dominated. And it has to start with believing that you can make that comeback. Because we've been in games before. We've done games where you just look at one team and realize they have no chance of making it back. Not in the one we just saw here. They did it, and they did it well. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we say good night from Pittsburgh.